So, too much sugar, too much refined carb, and here comes type 2 diabetes. Now, one of the key things is we don't have to wait to get type 2 diabetes. You can tell 20 years in advance if you're going to get it or not. Partly, just look at your family history, but there is a very precise test, very precise, put together, or I should say best, best described by Dr. Joseph Kraft in 1976. He put together 3,500 tests in which people were sent to the lab, they had blood drawn when they were fasting, they glugged down that sugar, and then they had a blood test every hour on the hour for anywhere from four to six hours. Sounds like a standard glucose tolerance test, doesn't it? But Dr. Kraft went a lot further. He measured the insulin level at each point. So he had two reports. Here's the blood sugar report, and it's plotted, and a curve is drawn. And here's the insulin report, and it's plotted, and a curve is drawn. And what Dr. Kraft found is that of 3,500 tests, the first roughly half of them, or roughly half of them, 15 or 1,600, uh, were clearly abnormal just on the grounds of the sugar. These were people who were all referred because their doctors thought they had diabetes. So about half of them were just clearly abnormal on the grounds of the blood sugar. But the other half were said to be normal if you just looked at the sugar curve. But if you looked at the insulin curve, two-thirds of that half, so that's one-third, two-thirds of that half were clearly making way too much insulin, but their blood sugars were still under control. So Dr. Kraft wrote his paper in 1976, published it in one of the laboratory journals. We've used it since 1976, and if we test suspect that somebody is on the road to type 2 diabetes, we'll run what's called the glucose tolerance insulin resistance test, and we could tell from the people who are making too much sugar to, wrong, I said that wrong, didn't I? Too much insulin to control their sugar, those are the people who are going to have type 2 diabetes if they're not careful. And if they go on to the appropriate diet, take some vitamins and minerals, and I forgot, exercise is a very big deal here to burn up some of that sugar. I shouldn't have left that off. That's natural medicine too, exercise. If they get their diet, do their exercise, and go on their supplements, we can do another test in a year, and they've got less insulin resistance. What tells us the resistance is less is that the body isn't making as much insulin to regulate the sugar anymore. It doesn't need to. The resistance isn't there. So actually, we've checked people who's in their entire family, the type 2 diabetes started coming on in older members of the family at age 50 and 60. We've checked people in their teens and 20s and found they were making way too much insulin. And we we're able to tell these folks that, look, right now you're making too much insulin. The inference is that you've got insulin resistance because you're making too much insulin for your sugar. And therefore, if you do this, this, and this, you never need to get type 2 diabetes. And if you don't, your odds are very high that you will get type 2 diabetes. So it isn't all that complicated. Now, um, you've heard that from time to time politics gets into medicine, like all the time. But would you believe that a program put into place by the United States Congress 20 years ago has a whole lot to do with the large increase in type 2 diabetes in the last 20 years? Sounds amazing, doesn't it? But it's entirely true. You can look it up. Now, what you can look up is that starting about 20 years ago, Congress put in price supports for sucrose, which is sugar coming from sugar cane. And those price supports, and, those, and they also put in import quotas, those price supports and import quotas drove the price of sucrose up to around 19, 20, 21 cents a pound. Well, my goodness, you can get fructose for less than half of that. So if you look at labels on foods, before those price supports went in, Things were usually f sweetened with sucrose. Remember when all the cola drinks were sweetened with sucrose? Look at it now. Everybody switched over to fructose. Why? Because it's a lot cheaper than sucrose. Why is sucrose so expensive? The Congress did it. Now, as Linus Pauling said, fructose causes lots more trouble than sucrose ever thought of causing. 
Fructose is a quicker hit into the sugar regulatory mechanisms. Sucrose, you probably know, has to be broken down. It's, it's two sugars stuck together. It has to be broken down first. So it's just a little slower in its processing. Um, all the fructose that's been piled, uh, again, you can look at the statistics for increase in consumption of fructose relative to sucrose in the last 20 years. So we get to thank a congressional program for some of the increase in type 2 diabetes over the last 20 years. The congressional program, largely funded by com campaign contributions from large sugar producers, so that the price of the sucrose would be protected. Now, I got to say that you got to have the genetic tendency. I don't care how many congressional price supports there are. If you don't have the genetics, and as you pointed out, one person in three has these genetics, you're still not going to get type 2 diabetes. But for that one person in three, they have to be very, very careful if it's in the family to keep the consumption of refined sugar, whether it's fructose or sucrose, to an absolute zero. And if, not, if that's not possible, to an absolute minimum. Keep the refined carbs out, uh, out, get plenty of exercise. And just those two steps will keep a lot of us out of the diabetes program without a list of supplements from here to there. But if we don't catch the problem until we have quite a lot of insulin resistance going on, then usually we have to add quite a number of supplements which are known to reduce insulin resistance. There's research that shows that they do. Um, things like omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, alpha-lipoic acid, chromium, and the list goes on and on. Uh, and then we can reel the situation back in to where the insulin resistance isn't there anymore. Uh, I'm sorry for throwing those congressional price supports in, but uh, politics gets into, med into medicine all the time. <laughs>